Exit Wounds is the Steven Seagal mega blockbuster hit movie where he showed the world his love of rap, which ended up being a typo that wasn't discovered until it was too late. I'd like to make something very clear. I don't have rage. Because that was another typo. It starts off with this guy doing introductions. Second leading cause of death for all people in the US. That's right, Steven Seagal, who's gunning for that number one spot, literally. <laughs> then he tries to haul ass out of there before Seagal can make him deader than his career. We'll see about that. So now Seagal's doing some sit down rampaging <laughs> and chasing that euphoria that only destroying families can give him. But then he spots this helicopter, and something about it really pisses him off. So he says f*** the script and f*** science. <laughs> now for some unfinished business. Shit! That's what you fucking get. You were lucky, extremely lucky. That it was just a vice president who everyone always hates and that nobody would ever believe whatever the fuck this is. So he goes into work in a truck. They claim they were taking on a test drive because it's free that way. <laughs> And his boss wants to see him to tell him how smart she is. Water never really hurt anybody. Outside of drownings, plane crashes, tsunamis, and numerous other things. This year alone, three complaints filed against you for excessive force. But that's bullshit because they can't complain when they're dead or he'd be deep into triple figures. Are you listening? No, of course not. I can't type. Or read, or write, or act, really anything useful. So they send him back to school with other stupid adults. You probably all recognize me from my show. No, it's True Lies and marrying Roseanne. That's all you'll ever be. So Seagal fights his desk, and it's actually kind of close. <laughs> Then he storms out because who fucking cares? They're just glad he's leaving. That stupid desk really pissed him off, so now he's gonna kill the most diverse group he can. I'm an expert at this. He was really hoping for more women, but I guess you guys will do. But they're no joke, and after this guy dances his way past him, he knows he's in the fight of his life. So after throwing what was by far the highest kick of his career, he does some breakdance fighting of his own. Because when you have a chance to hurt someone and insult the audience at the same time, you just have to go for it. Then he tops it off by inventing a new way to handcuff where you just put one cuff on a broken leg. <laughs> then you leave it there and just f***ing leave. Now everything's going great, and he's enjoying the post-murder afterglow when he comes across some shit that shakes him to his core. Outside of diet, exercise, work ethic, and deodorant, littering is one of his biggest pet peeves. That guy is so f***. But it's not his first day, and he knows litter bugs always work in pairs. So Seagal makes his bust, you looking? and he tries to sweet talk his way out of it. Checking on my old lady, you know, keeping tabs on her. He likes where you're going with this. Women, you can't trust them. <laughs> not as far as I can throw ass. He likes throwing them too, but he slips up by having a conscience and telling his girl to get to safety. <laughs> Big mistake, motherfucker. You gonna try to put a plunger in my ass? Oh my god, everything's always butt plunger with this guy. But his ass is gonna have to wait because he sees two guys talking. Give me a ballpark figure. Which is total bullshit. 
after trying to murder each other for a while. They realize, holy shit, we're both cops. One of us should have probably said something. But Seagal wouldn't have done anything differently. Now they have a truffle shuffle contest, which Seagal dominates. <laughs> then the day gets even better when he makes a new friend. Did you really be the suspect unconscious with a dead cat? No. They were both dead the whole time. And yes, he put on his uniform to go home because he's definitely a real person who knows how things work. So he changes in his car like the rest of blue collar America. Damn, that was some good police work. Thanks a lot. Fuck you. So he gets back in his car and changes again then shows us that he gets how elevators work when, son of a bitch, someone tied up the cleaning crew, which robs Seagal the thrill of the hunt when he inevitably kills them. So he gives them a 30-second head start and tells them to make it count. After counting to two and then blasting them, he checks out this office when, holy shit, it must be Christmas. Now he's trying to escape with his hostage when they send in a rescue team. But Seagal's still the top no look and flint shot on the department, which doesn't mean he's not terrible. He's just the only one that does that. Then SWAT shows up and he thinks quick and tells them he's just taking his granddaughter in for questioning. That poor girl was never seen again. He then makes a quick stop to tell Sergeant Dokes season five is when that sh started getting good and only got better from there. You fucking monster. When his boss gets word of that vile shit, she interrupts him changing from police uniform to police uniform. Last time I checked, this was the men's locker room. Which is why she almost didn't check here. His punishment is he has to partner with the vending machine tech, which will never work because they're so different. Whatever. Uh, George, meet your new partner here. Now we see DMX at a dealership where they don't take him seriously because it's not like rappers to spend frivolously or promote themselves. So when they play one of his songs, the movie loses all the credibility High Flying Seagal worked hard to earn. Luckily, things get grounded again when they start teleporting through town. Now we're halfway through the movie, and while it doesn't seem to be going anywhere, that's only because it's not. So fuck it, let's go see some boobies. And if he can randomly attack someone who hasn't committed any crimes, <laughs> then all the better. So now he's just minding his own business, choking the life out of some guy, when these assholes have to get all nosy. So Seagal puts on his scariest pouty face, which causes this guy <laughs> to laugh so hard, he forgets he has a second arm, which allows Seagal to do some more of his signature acrobatics before launching him into a chain, killing him instantly. And if Seagal can do side aerials, then anything's possible. And now he's fighting a Jedi. He defeats him with an arm lock so devastating that the fight just fucking ends. And now they're in an office. We're gonna call backup. We're gonna get out of here, right? What backup? We ain't here. Because this was being sneaky. Welcome to Seagal. It never gets any better, somehow always worse. What are we doing? What are we fucking doing, man? Dumpster diving, fucking obviously. Now that he's done at the strip club, he needs to unwind. What? Sitting next to a guy getting a lap dance and staring at him is such a real person thing to do. After hitting up two or three more strip clubs, he works up an appetite and crashes this dinner scene. Why don't you take a walk? So he eats all that guy's food with his bare hands, then tells a dirty joke. Bring me something solid. 
I have something solid. And leaves while she vomits. The next day, Mr. Roseanne's back to give some crucial info. The guy's a computer whiz. Yeah, no shit. He's basically Mr. Robot. Tell us something we don't know. I got IPO statements, tax returns. I got. Oh, fuck off. Thanks, partner. Fuck you. What the guy who used to have a career, I mean, this one, didn't mention was that he parks like a total dick. Party up got me through some rough times, but this shit's unforgivable. Meanwhile, Seagal's doing his patented who farted move before plowing into a bulldozer. And then through a wacky chain of events, he and his chins are in an upside down van that seems to be gaining speed. And the movie pretends like he caught this. Then he probably shoots a bystander or some shit. It's hard to care about anything when I know this shit's out there. Maybe six. And of course, Seagal's in cahoots with this maniac. This is my operation. These crazy fucks have a whole criminal hideout for their illegal parking operation. This is all our stuff. We have cameras hidden in everything. I don't see how that helps, but you also don't need help when you have Carl motherfucking Winslow, who says, fuck your rules, I'll stare at the camera all I want. Now Seagal has a loose end to tie up, so he meets his boss. I always said women are bad drivers. And I can't believe someone would say some shit like that. And yeah, I get it. But it was how he said it. Which is when he realizes that wasn't a loose end at all, but whatever. So he steals this poor, poor Ducati. After terrorizing most of the city, some good Samaritans corner him. Which is when the director said, fuck it, let's just hit 90 minutes and go home. Nothing hits the cutting room floor. Which gives us this gem that has no business being in a movie, but I am so glad that it is. The guy who needs a body double to walk a couple parking spaces was somehow talked into jiggle waddling and it was glorious. Now they're in a warehouse for some reason and everyone's betraying everyone like anyone fucking cares. Then the chief of police shows up, which is the most unrealistic thing in the entire movie until he ADs into the ceiling. <laughs> and now I totally buy it. Then after some embarrassing shooting and some embarrassing anime shit, <laughs> with a hint of something sexual, the bad guys beat the other bad guys. <laughs> Seagal agrees to go back to school if they'll stop picking on him. So they all get together and tell him to go f*** himself. Right. 